Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the F64 Lunch Bunch. Uh, before I even get started, we've got Scott Kelby with us. Are you, are you playing a, a few quick bars for the intro? I, I wasn't going to now. It's, it's just, it's metal. You don't want to do metal for the, <laughs> for the intro. Fine. Bend one hey, note. Everybody. You have to bend at least one note. Does it have to be a good note or does it really matter? No, it can, it can no. be way removed. All right, you, fr you froze as you did it. <laughs> <laughs> so much for technology. Welcome to the internet era. Uh, tune in today at four when Scott Kelby will be doing online guitar lessons. A second <laughs> note. <laughs> second note. That will be the second note, and by the end of the week, we'll have the whole song. Hey, everybody, I want to welcome you to the F64 Lunch Bunch. Uh, we did our first program yesterday. There were a lot of great questions. The whole idea is basically, we're all in this together. We're all frustrated. We're all loaded with anxiety. Uh, I know for me, I go up and down emotionally like a roller coaster. I've learned to not watch the news quite so much. Uh, joining us today, we've got Scott Kelby as our special guest. We've got Scott Bourne back with us. We've got Larry Becker in the middle there, Shamira Young. I'm looking at my screen, Steve Brazel. Me and Don Kamarechka, one of the only Canadians in, in the world to not use A as an expression. I try very hard not to. Yeah. And our whole purpose here is to answer your questions, to come up with some ideas and some things that you can be doing so that this incredibly frustrating and difficult time in business today uh, can be a, well, it's, it's hard to find the silver lining here, but could be positive in your life because business is going to come back. We are gonna be back in the photography business again. We really haven't left it now and there's so many different things you could be doing to help build a stronger business going forward. And anybody of my, of the, of the other hosts here and Scott, any Scott Bourne, jump in on anything you feel that I missed. No, I, I covered I, I it think well. We all have anxiety too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly it. I, I think everybody is feeling the same thing. And that's really the whole point of this is just to, to reinforce the community that we're, that we're all in it together. There are ways to stay creative, to feed your creative soul as you're, as you're sitting at home or self quarantining or whatever. And that's what we're here for. Uh, uh, just to remind everybody, instead of the chat, we do have a Q and a, so you can put your question in the Q and a, if you move your mouse over the window, it'll pop up at the bottom. And, uh, other attendees can vote your question up and down and we answer them on, on the air. For example, uh, Lucci Dumas uh, wanted to know if we're going to record this. And yes, the answer is these end up over on Skip's YouTube page. Yeah, Lucy, the one from yesterday was put up under Skip Cohen University. I was going to put yesterday and today up there together at the end of today. So they'll both be there. And that's all thanks to Steve Brazels being a whiz in technology and cleaning it up and sending us the file. So let's, let's get into it. I know Scott Bourne had some great things that he brought to the party today. I brought party favors. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, listen, I think it's important to note that this isn't the first time something like this has happened. For those of us that are ancient, like me, I have been through the following I was in my first trip to Africa in the 70s when the big malaria wave came, and I did get malaria, and I'm still here. I've survived shortly thereafter that, the Hong Kong flu, MERS, SARS, H1N1. It's, uh, you know, just, it's, it's part of what happens, and there's always an end, and I want everybody to be focused on that. There's always an end. We're going to all be back hanging out with each other at conferences, telling each other the same old jokes. You got to see that from here in order to go where you want to go. But to get there, you also have to survive. So when I'm on the show, what I'm going to do every time is bring actionable, actual things that will help you, not just my opinions. And I want to quickly run through those, and I'm going to do that with Steve's help. He's got an ability to put these things up on the screen for everybody. I'm going to start yep. with Adobe is offering two months free of their creative suite. So you can use the link we're providing you and you can see the letter from them. I know there's a few hoops you have to jump through to actually get it, but I think it's very generous of them. 
And for those who are not taking in any income right now, it helps you to, you know, continue to work on your stuff. And Save not, me a hundred bucks. It's a big deal. And, and, and I did the same thing too. Uh, somebody said, if you go through their link, it's two months free if you, you pretend to cancel and then they give you offers. But I saw somewhere somebody said, if you call them, they'll even give you three. Well, there you go. I think it's a great thing. I know that income has stopped for a lot of you, and that means it's tough to meet outflow. So here's a way to reduce it. You know, it's just a small amount. And for those of you who do video, if you are interested and, and audio, uh, Avid is offering a 90-day free license for Media Composer, Pro Tools. Uh, th these are professional level audio and video editing tools, the best there are. And here's a great thing. If you've wanted to learn these tools but didn't have the money to buy a license, you got some downtime. Take advantage of these licenses. See if these things can be brought into your business. A lot of you are doing multimedia. You need pro audio. You need pro video. Here are three free months from Avid, tops in the business. Hey, Scott, just before you go on, for everybody that wants the links for these, um, I'll have the links posted in a blog post within a half hour, 45 minutes after we're done today. Awesome. So don't make yourself crazy looking for the links. I'll have them all for you. Now, for those of you who rely, for instance, on public spaces to get your Wi-Fi, and I know a lot of photographers work down at the local coffee shop or at the library, uh, here's another way that you can save money. If you're having trouble getting on the internet, Comcast is offering 60 days of free internet service and access at their public hotspots. And they have so many public hotspots in the Seattle area that you can virtually just get in a car and drive and never not be connected to Comcast. It's pretty cool. So this is all free for 60 days. Again, we want to control the outflow on uh, times when our inflow is restricted. So here's a tool that you can use. And if it means calling your current you know, service and canceling because you need to stop paying for two months and then take advantage of this, why wouldn't you consider it? So it's, it's up there. Um, I'm grateful for anything that anybody offers that can make uh, life easier for freelancers, people who are creatives, people who don't necessarily have a steady income from a, an employer. Let's move on. The next one is uh, something we're using, Zoom, right? We're using Zoom. And, and it's uh, performing well enough, I hope. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So they, they have uh, video conferencing, uh, and they've adjusted their free account to accommodate students through July 1st. And Frame.io is offering 90-day free enterprise accounts, as well as two terabytes of free space for 90 days. I don't know if you all are familiar with uh, Frame.io, but um, it's a good service. And it, you know, if, you, if you're doing workflow with video and teams, um, it's definitely something you wanna play with. So I brought those to the table today. I'll have more the next time I'm on the show. I am spending time researching these kinds of assets and I wanna make them available every time. And if you have a particular need for something and I haven't mentioned it, Go ahead and send me an email, scott at scottborn.com. I'll look for it for you. I'll have, I'll have my uh, team look for it and report back to everybody. And Scott, you, you've been through a lot. I mean, you forgot about the Spanish flu, man. You came through that sailing. That's, I'm not quite that <laughs> no old, one, okay? No one I'm, mentioned his, he getting, him uh, getting through the War of 1812. He, he came through that like a champ. Hey, yeah. Scott, now it starts. Scott, when, when was the War of 1812? <laughs> 1841? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, listen, there, there, there's stuff out there to help you, and there are people out there. To help. I mean, the people who are on this show right now are some of the people I respect most in the business, and everybody's here providing their time, uh, not asking for anything in return. I really have, I got to say one thing. It's, there's a lot to be disgusted about during this time, but the way our industry is responding to try to help everybody has got me pretty proud and pumped up. I, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see that everyone's willing to lend a hand. And I want to make sure, I mean, I don't know if I can help you, but if there's anything you think I can do for you, if you're listening, 
If you're watching, send me an email. Scott at Scott Born. I answer my own email. I'll figure out if there's a way to, to do something for you if I can. And if I can't, I'll task these guys to help me figure out who can do it. We need to help each other. We need to be able to survive so that when we come out on the other side of this, we're not only better, but we're stronger. And and the questions are starting to come in really good, which I love. Anybody want to take uh, Boris's hold, question? Hold that for one second. Okay. Just to a point Scott made about things he's been through. There have been six um, viruses that have hit the world and created havoc with the stock market since 2003. Each time the market dropped by approximately 13%. This year, the analysts are saying, well, there was another 5% that kicked in because of the oil issues between Saudi and Russia and what was going on in oil. There's almost 20% of the 30% drop that we've seen and the impact on everybody. And it's already, if you followed it today, and whether you play the market or not, uh, it's hard not to get away from the news when it shows the arrow going down and the stock market dropped again. The bottom line is that the sell-off that we've seen over the last 10 days is fear selling, not math selling. And that comes directly from somebody who I've got a great amount of respect for in the investment business here in, uh, in Sarasota. So I think the best advice for everybody is watch the news less. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I actually set aside four hours of my day where I do not tune into the news. I kind of disconnect. I work on one particular project, a problem, um, solve something, and then reconnect with the world. Because if I stay connected, I just, I, the anxiety overwhelms me. And just before we go to Boris's question, Scott Kelby. Yeah. We've yes. got, we've got, yeah, yes, there he is. There he is. I feel is. like I brought a lot to the table today. Yes. No, we've got you, we, we've, we've got you here to join us today. And you sit on a mountain of helpful information um, online. Uh, the grid, guests on the grid. I don't know what's happening with the grid. Uh, I may have been on the last last show is there a show a grid tomorrow night uh we actually did one today we did last week's okay uh, and we did one today only because i'm teaching a seminar for los angeles tomorrow so i'm supposed to be in los angeles actually today and tomorrow but of course you know we we're, we weren't able to do that and so uh i am teaching a the same seminar live to those same people in los angeles all day tomorrow so we had to record the grid today so at 11 a.m today we did the grid. We already broadcast it, but we will rebroadcast it tomorrow at uh, its normal time, Wednesday at four. All right. Any particular questions that you're seeing that are that are setting the trend along with everything else that we're feeling? Uh, I don't see any particular questions. You know, I mean, uh, photographers are. I mean, who's shooting weddings right now? You know, who's shooting real estate? You know, all of these things. Who's doing portraits right now? Um, I, I think it's a funky time. Uh, I know everybody's doing a lot to help. Uh, we're doing a free webinar. So we do webinars for our, our Kelby One members on a regular basis. Now we're doing them each Friday just for everybody. Opening, we did our first one last week, which was on how to send uh, prints to a lab. So you know all those things that you, you think, one day when I get some time, I should do that. That's kind of what we're doing. So we're going to talk about backing up and organizing your photos and scanning and restoring old photos and all these things that you say when you have time, you'll get around to it. But, you know, I, I really like what Scott Bourne did earlier and the things that he talked about. And I, I think the best thing that we can do right now, since we are so limited in what we can do, is to set us our, ourselves up for success when this is over. I think it like it is going to be over. It is, it's going to run its course and it's not going to be an easy time. And it's probably going to be longer than any of us think, but when it's over, we have to start over and we can either really have to use this time wisely to, to educate ourselves, to invest in that, maybe that software that we've been thinking about for running our business. Like, man, I wish I had that software. I know I should learn that. I just never have the time. Now's the time to do those things to put you, you and your business in a situation where when this does come back, I think when, when it does come back and this virus is behind us, it's going to come back with a roar. I think you're going to see things come back faster from this uh, for like the reasons that, that we were just talking about where 
some of these things are, this isn't a man-made crisis really, like normally, like it normally is. You know, it's not a war. It's not, you know, something that we've done outside of the oil price thing. But this is something that was thrust upon us. And when it's behind us, I think we're going to roar back. And where you'll be at that point is either in a much better position than you were before, or you're going to be right where you are now. I think this is such a great time to take advantage of doing all of those things that you've been putting off doing. This is a great time to start getting your marketing ready. This is a start time to, to build lists and to do things to, to get your business in shape to where when this thing is behind us, you're launching. Scott, didn't you have a, um, a blog post about what to do during these times? Yeah, we did a blog post and an episode of The Grid where we went through 10 things that were like, look, we're kind of stuck. <laughs> we're, we're not leaving. Here's what you can do. And it, it was, it was 10 things. By the way, Larry, I love that background that you have behind. Oh, thank you. I'm very jealous. I, 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 do, I don't really have anything here. <laughs> just, I have bad lighting. I just everything bad. So anyway, yours looks wonderful. Uh, but anyway. Um, yeah, I, I laid the bricks uh, over a period of two weekends. Did you really? No. <laughs> Why am I talking to you, Larry? Just a, just Why do I even try? <laughs> just to piggyback on something Scott said, uh, I, another thing I picked up this morning that's not in the news is that both Germany, China, and there was one other country that announced that they're seeing new uh, cases trail off and in one of them, 75% of the Starbucks are open again, and so are some of the Apple stores. So, wow. you know, it's, it's wishful thinking, and we don't know where this is going to keep going in this country, but we are seeing a change, and that's, that's the part of this that doesn't make it into the news. Hey, Steve, you were doing great on the Q&A. Do, do you want to jump back in? Yeah, I'll, just, I'll start at the top. Uh, it's got the one vote up so far, and that is Stuart said... <clears throat> What would you suggest to photographers who suffer from, and I, I'll, Boris, I'll get to yours too, but this one got voted up. Uh, so folks in the Q&A, you can go and there's a thumbs up and it, depending on how many votes it gets, it goes to the top. What would you suggest to photographers who suffer from depression and anxiety now that they can't get out and enjoy their hobby? He said, he's fine, he's asking for a friend. Anybody? Can I would say, on this one? Oh. oh yeah, uh, Shamira, yeah. please. Uh, just to share something that's been helpful with me. So we've covered taking action and working on, on aspects of our business that we haven't previously had time for, like marketing and, and social media we touched on yesterday and, and building up a stash of blog posts for your blog, your website. Um, and, and those are all important and well and good. Uh, but I, I don't want to get woo-woo-y on people. But it's important to keep things in perspective right now. We do have things to be grateful for. And, and it's important not to lose sight of that. I'm grateful I don't have the virus. Imagine that, you know, that's, that's there's one very important thing. Um, some people find meditation helpful. I'm not a meditating pro, but I find that taking even 10 to 15 minutes to get away from the news and to get away from sometimes my phone because we're probably all getting constant messages and emails about the virus. Um, that's all people want to talk about. Just take some time, 10 or 15 minutes to just look at what you're thankful for. You know, be thankful that you have your health, hopefully family, friends, and that combined with taking smart action to build up your business um, processes during this time really helps. It helps me kind of calm down to know that even though you feel like you can't go out and take photo shoots, you can still still take smart action for your business. I was going to say, if you're, if you're holed up at home, uh, like I am, oh, we've been home for about eight days straight and uh, cabin fever is starting to set in a little bit. You know, you want to kind of, you can see outside, but I'm not going there. Um, but I've got my wife and daughter here. Why don't I try to get them involved in photography? I mean, maybe they're not interested, but they're going to be bored enough soon to be interested in anything I put in front of them. Um, or maybe I use this as an opportunity to take some nice family portraits, you know, just something that's outside of the business realm, get your mind off of things and just, if you're at home with family, 
make yourself a, a nice family portrait. Have some fun with that. Or if you're by yourself, this is the perfect time to make the most elaborate selfie of your career. <laughs> hey, Steve, I want to go back to that last question, if, uh, the, the uh, question about the depression and anxiety. Yeah. Um, you know what? I have a friend that's in that same kind of boat, and I was telling him, I'm like, you know what? You don't need to watch the news at all. If something good happens, your friends will call you. They'll text you. Hey, there's a cure. Hey, there's a, you know, there's a, a vaccine. If something good happens, you'll know immediately. But right now, for the next couple of weeks, you're only to torture. You're going to read New York. Scott, you're starting to break up a little bit so that you know. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you this the any better? Sentence. Yep. Yeah. The last yeah. couple sentences broke up, though, so if you want to pick oh, up I'm from so, there. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. The um, All you're going to get is bad news right now. For the next few weeks, you're not going to really read anything that's going to make you go, wow, this is behind us. So if you can stay, literally, just stay away from the news. Anything really important happens, you'll get a call. You'll get a text from a friend and they'll tell you, great news, there's a, there's a vaccine. Great news, they've got a cure. Uh, great news, they didn't have any new uh, cases overnight. You don't have to be clung, stuck to the news. And I think it's the news that there's such conflicting information in the news. There's a ton of bad news. And there's people and there's journalists that are writing clickbait stories that are writing right. the worst possible case scenarios. And I see it over and over again. I see people, oh, it's going to be two years, you know, like. So if you can wean yourself off the news, if anxiety and depression is a, is a concern, it's going to only be fueled by watching the news. Cut yourself off from the news and wait to hear anything good from your friends. And your friends will, when the news is good, we'll all be calling everybody we know. I agree. And just to, to throw in, George made a great comment for Stuart, and that is, hey, if he's looking for somebody to shoot with, uh, he would love having a photography friend himself. Uh, who wants to take Lucy's question? How to set yourself up. Oh, possible revenue streams, right? So this is one that I was thinking of. It's something that I do on a regular basis, and I don't think photographers do enough of. You've got time sitting in front of your computer right now, and I encourage you. I mean, not I right now. Wait till after the webinar. Oh, well, sure. Uh, I, I, maybe like don't act on this right now, but I know a lot of photographers don't take a look to see how their work is being misappropriated, how their copyright might be being infringed. And there's a lot of great tools out there for you to find where your work, oftentimes by large faceless corporations, has been taken without permission or compensation. I find them on a regular basis for my own work. Uh, if you load up uh, Google Images, uh, there's a little camera icon. There's also one on uh, bing.com. Uh, I don't use it for searching, but they have a different algorithm to detect stuff, and they've got a little camera icon as well. So does Yandex, the Russian search engine. All of these have different ways of searching the internet, and you can upload your image as a search term. In doing so, you will find everywhere that that search engine has found a particular image online. Some of it will be your own placements on social media, on your website, portfolio, etc. But you might be shocked as to how many of them are uh, people that have just effectively stolen your work. And if you've registered your copyright, uh, then you know, you've got legs for it. If you haven't, that's something you should do as well, is register your copyright. And there's a whole process. Actually, Steve Brazel has a great walkthrough on his Behind the Shot uh, TV podcast about how you go and do that. So pay attention to your copyright. Go and find people that might be misusing it. It's a bad time to like call a lawyer right now because everybody's hurting, but at least put that on the back burner as a possible thing to pick up when everything returns to normal. And in that bounce back, that That'll give you some extra legs, I think. Also, for those of you who don't know, Jack Reznicki, R-E-Z-N-I-C-K-I, -I, I hope. Yep, that's it. Yep. Um, just Google him and get over to Jack. Jack made a comment a few years back that the reason that he can retire now is because he did copyright protect all of his images. And Jack, with his partner, I don't remember the name of the attorney. but hey, the Tony Greenberg. Greenberg. There it is. They wrote one of the best books on, on copyright. This is a good, there it is. 
So if you can get to Steve's house, it's on, looks like it's the four shelf up in the back bookcase. Yeah. Um, this is a great time to be able to protect that, protect that investment. Also to Lucy, another point on Lucy's question and building up so you get off to that quick start. The comment was made by Sherry Hagerman in, a, in another roundtable discussion the other night about getting out and doing uh, headshots and being able to offer free headshots. Again, when I say getting out, getting out with, with social distance cautioning. But the whole idea being that if you are good to your customer base and you keep in touch with your clients they will remember you when this crisis is over. Good point. Agreed. If I could jump in, if you have a Flickr account and you have Pro, you can get some help searching for copyright infringement and even legal action on your behalf. And this is something I actively pursue on a regular basis. I also like to mention a company that I helped a long time ago get started called Image Rights will go out and do the search engine functions that Don is talking about for you in an automated way. You register your image with them, then they go out and look for that image for you. And then if the infringement takes place in a manner in which they think they can recover for you, then you can actually subscribe to a level of the service where they will take legal action on your behalf and take commissions that are similar to that of most attorneys. The first step you could take during this downtime, of course, is make sure you're registering your images. And we've had a couple of resources just described how to do that. But uh, it's extremely important to register your images. I'm infringed so often that it's a monthly line item in my pro forma cash analysis. And I think this is a great time for folks to look for lost revenue. Well, and, and I'm going to chime in on the, the registration thing because I register all my images now uh, after I actually had Jack Resnicki and Ed Greenberg, the copyright zone is their website. And after I had them on, I started registering everything. And one of the, when I tell people they should register, the, the biggest thing that everybody always says to me is, it's so complicated. It's so confusing. So, well, now you've got downtime. Go do it once and get used to it. You've got enough time now to do five, six registrations, however many you want, do your back catalog of images, get used to it, get a workflow going. And again, Don mentioned the video that I did, but just get used to it now so that you're caught up, <clears throat> you understand how to do it. And then as you do jobs going down the line, work that into a line item so that it, you know, it's not out of your pocket. It's the cost of doing business and you're passing registering that group of images, you know, into the total of your cost to the client. It's $55 to register up to a year's worth of images. So long as that total number is less than 750 photos, which is, you know, I spent January 1st and 2nd of this year registering my entire back catalog for the last 10 years. Um, and I had picked out some specific images over time that were uh, constantly infringed and I registered those separately, uh, you know, when that was happening. But I realized, why don't I just sit down and give myself some time? It took me two days to do 10 years. The first one was the longest. I had to figure out the process. Everything else was a cookie cutter approach. Do it. And, and I, I actually register every concert I shoot before I register unpublished the, you know, if I shoot 2000 images, I'll call it down to 750, register those or 500, whatever, register those. Then I publish and it makes it a ton easier. Who wants to take the next question? Before we finish, I just want to say this. If you think this is hard, let me explain something to you. If I can do it, anybody can do it. He's right. Yeah, it's, it's really you. not hard. It's just, it's in not. fact, most, most of the registration, and every, anybody here that's done it will know what I mean. Most of the registration is add me. Like most of the screens that you have to fill out information on, once you've put your information in once, there's an add me button and it fills it in for you. It's really not that complex. Hey, I, I've got one more thing uh, around what else you can do to earn money in their downtime. And uh, go submit to Adobe Stock. Go submit stock images. Let me tell you what. Good answer. Because people will say, oh, I don't know. They don't pay that much. I don't want to make a dollar an image or 75 cents an image and all. And, and I'd ask people, I said, look, first off, don't send your portfolio images to Adobe Stock. Don't send your best images. Don't send the images that you're going to license or that you're going to print. But you probably have from, from thousands to hundreds of thousands of images sitting on a hard drive, earning nothing. 
if you if you make a buck an image, 75 cents an image, and you sell, I don't know, 30 images a day, 40 images a day while you're sleeping, I got a buddy of mine who pays for his Tesla Model X, Model S, every single month while he's asleep because he uploaded images to Adobe stock. Now, I will tell you this, the secret to making money on Adobe stock is not uploading 250 images and waiting for your checks to come rolling in. My buddy put up a couple of hundred one weekend and absolutely nothing happened. <laughs> nothing. Nobody bought anything. So the next weekend, he put up another hundred. Then another couple of hundred the next weekend. Then another couple of hundred. Oh, here comes a few sales. Uh, one of my buddies, he sent me a screen capture, so I know this is, is legit, because he, he was telling me how much he's making on Adobe stock. He sent me his account. Scott, you're cutting out again. He, uh, he made $114,000 on Adobe stock. I got a screen capture of his account page. and uh, But he has like 16,000 images up there. Wow. He didn't put them up in one weekend. He put them up over the course of a year. He would just do a couple hundred images, 300, 400. And then he started, once the money started rolling in, now when he's doing client jobs, like doing, you know, now he's having the model, sign a model release and doing a whole session afterwards just for stock. And I, I'm telling you what guys, that, that it is, you'll have photographers that are not gonna sell me images for 75 cents. Really, how much are they selling for now? Zero, they're sitting on a hard drive. Why not take this time to get all those images together and start selling them on stock. I'm telling you, I, I, the success stories that I have of people that are making money, on it's, they're, it's crazy. You wouldn't believe the money they're making. By the way, one other thing on Adobe stock, don't discount short video clips. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Video pays really well. Yeah. Video pays way better. <laughs> yeah. and, they're, and they're looking for, we're talking about, Shamara, what was the cutoff? Eight seconds? It was very short. Yeah, they're looking for eight to 10 second clips and you're home now. And if you're home with kids now, there are things that they're doing where their kids are washing their hands. Now, obviously you have to be careful and protect your kids. Uh, but the whole point is they're looking for these short video bursts and you've got the ability to capture some of that and build another extension of your business and your income stream. Well, every, so every single one of us has video on our hard drives we haven't sold. And I took this time to learn Final Cut Pro. I finally learned it. And I mean, I, I actually learned it. I kind of know what I'm doing. And I started editing my video clips. And I've got one Eagle clip that I shot a couple years ago on one of the Canon Pro cameras that wasn't released yet. They let me test it. And I've, I've licensed it 140 times. It's the same clip. And it's like 10 bucks a time, but hey, it's 10 bucks I didn't have times 1400. And yep. as, I, as I recall, there is a list that Adobe did publish. They'll tell you what they're looking for. Last time I checked. All, all the stock um, agencies will do that. Yeah, yeah. So there's, it doesn't have to be a guessing game. Um, check out the list. Maybe I'll try to find it and send it to you, Skip, for the show notes so people can check that out. Good idea. Mm -hmm. um, I'll take this next question, which is from Good. Ant Pruitt of This Week in Tech. Uh, and he says, what are folks like Mr. Brazel and Alan Hess doing to fill in the gaps of concerts uh, being postponed or canceled because yeah, I shoot live music and pretty much nothing but live music. So I got nothing to shoot in the sense of those concerts, but <clears throat> excuse me. What I tell people is every local band around you right now is also not playing shows and it's a good time for them to update their portfolio of promotional shots or marketing shots. And yes, you can photograph people from six feet away. So if you've got local artists that are around, you know, reach out to them, talk about doing some promotion shots, obviously, again, maintaining social distancing as best as you can, uh, or arrange to do it as soon as things start coming back. If you're, if you also do any kind of graphic design or web design stuff, you can help them work on their website. There's a number of things you can do. For me, it's mostly I have just been diving head deep into this type of a thing webinars the podcast that i do and things like that but there's a lot of things that you can do <clears throat> in any given genre in your community right now that maintain social distancing keep the safety measures that health experts say that we need to keep which are true and and you need to do it 
but also uh, Scott Kelby mentioned this earlier in the thing. The main thing is, yes, there's work that you can find or create or do now, but the main thing is setting yourself up. Think of it as, as opening your business again, right? You know this is going to go away. You know sooner or later, again, as Scott said, the virus is going to be behind us at some point, which means I'm going to wake up tonight of a nightmare of a virus behind me. But <laughs> it's sooner or later, it's going to be behind you. So set yourself up to reopen, as it were. As soon as this thing's cleared, other people are going to be sitting around their house lounging and out of the, the groove. Get yourself in the groove. Keep yourself operating so that as soon as this thing is, is clear and we can start working normally again, you've actually got a head start to get back into it. Great advice. <clears throat> All right. Um, there was that question from Boris from a while ago that I might want to uh, to tackle. Uh, seldomly used old lenses. Uh, you know, you've probably got a collection of vintage glass that uh, just collects dust. It might not have seen the light of day in quite some time, and thereby it might be full of fungus. But um, if you have old lenses, it'd be a great time to take them out, play, be creative. He specifically mentions uh, mirror telephoto lenses. And I might need actually, uh, I might need my tele, uh, my uh, propeller hat to properly describe <laughs> this because um, when when you have a uh, a mirror lens, basically you have the optics that come in. You'll see a little sort of circle right in the middle if you look right down through the lens. That's a mirror where light comes down to the very bottom of the lens, bounces back up, hits that mirror, and then bounces back down again. So that effectively creates a much longer light path than you would normally have uh, in a lens that size. You need a much bigger lens in order to get there uh, and a much more expensive one. They typically do this type of technology with telescopes. But it's kind of a, an optical compromise. You're never going to get really sharp images, especially on modern cameras with a lens like that. So don't, don't expect that. Uh, try to zoom in and do some uh, interesting abstract work. We've got gardens that are coming to life. We've got trees that are starting to bloom. You can shoot them from your window with this lens. Maybe even do some pan blurs or something that's just artistic, a play with lines and shapes and colors using the particular eccentricities of that lens. A lot of vintage lenses will have beautiful bokeh. Try to shoot specular highlights that are out of focus to accentuate that. Um, there's a lot of artistic endeavors that you can have just because now you're bored and you just want to explore something new and you might discover something that is right up your alley and do a whole new series of work because of it. Okay, I want to know where I, want to know where I can get a hat like that. That's all I want to know. <laughs> I want to piggyback on that. And speaking of old equipment and something you can do now, uh, there isn't a high school or a junior high school in the country it isn't short on funds when it comes to photographic gear. So some of that old equipment that you are not using anymore that ha that just has no purpose except collecting dust in a, on a back shelf or in a camera bag, think about taking some of that out and putting together a donation to your local school system. Everybody has got stuff that they don't use anymore, and there isn't a school around, I'll say it again, there isn't a school around that isn't short on gear and when this does kick back, uh, when business does kick back to normal, these kids are going to be looking for new things and ideas in photography. And you can walk away a hero with your local high school or junior high school just based on gear you've got sitting in the closet. Yeah, yeah I wanna, that's true. I want to piggyback on that, Skip, because it can, and it's more philosophical. If you're having a downtime, if you're disturbed, if you're depressed, the number one thing I know to do, and this is – because it comes from, you know, oldguysknowstuff.com. Uh, I, I can tell you, if you stop thinking about yourself and start thinking about others, put them first, put their needs first, do something like hey, put together an online thing to gather some old glass that you can give to your school. The more you concentrate on other people's troubles, the less time you have to concentrate on your own. And there's, my friend Scott Kelby has a saying that has changed my life. I've never forgotten it since the first time he said it, which was, it never hurts to do the right thing. It never hurts to do the right thing. And sometimes the right thing would be to put somebody else ahead of yourself. And I want to challenge people that are having a particularly tough time right now. And I want to challenge people that are of means right now. Even though they're coming at this from opposite spectrums, they can both do the same thing. Figure out what you can do to help. And before you know it, this thing will be done. With respect, I want to step back just a little bit because my focus these days is, is video oriented a lot of times. And we all did mention 
you know, stock video is doing really well. But one of the reasons stock video is doing well is what people are looking for is B-roll. In other words, they're creating a, a video about a thing, but they would love to have some cutaway footage that we call B-roll. And B-roll shot at standard frame rates is okay. But B-roll shot at a higher frame rate, so 60 frames per second, or if your camera can do it, 120 frames per second, so that the video then can be slowed down considerably in B-roll, in a video then played back really slow is a great thing to do. So if you've never shot video, now's the time to practice it and learn it. And a couple quick tips and every photographer who's never shot video will be able to pull this off. One of them is always set your uh, shutter speed to be double what your frame rate is. So if you're shooting a video at 1080p, 60, 1080p 60. So the standard on HD video is 1080p 30. So if you shoot 1080p 60, because your camera, most, most DSLR cameras can do that, um, then you want your shutter speed setting on your camera to be double that. And, but you don't want it to be a lot more than double because when it gets really high, when the uh, frames per second gets really high, then it gets jittery in the playback. So generally, the, you know, the rule of thumb is approximately double. So 1080p 60 means your frame rate, or rather your shutter speed, should be 120 approximately. And then when you go to uh, 1080p 120, then your shutter speed should be approximately 240, approximately whatever your camera setting is that's right in that neighborhood. Then the footage that you shoot can be slowed way down it's going to be more valuable to people that are looking for it for B-roll. Look up the term shutter angle. Yeah. Yeah. And Ant actually in the, uh, in the Q&A mentioned about stock video too, which is a great tip that I, I never thought of. Daniel had an interesting point, and this one's gotten most of the votes actually. And that is, he's in Switzerland and they've been locked in for four weeks. And he said the first week was the, the worst. Uh, he stopped listening to the news, but here's where it gets interesting. He started with sports programming in the morning. He's doing stretching. He's doing other type of stuff that he said, an old man at 50, please come on. Uh, oh but you know, I he hate it. exercising and stretching and yoga and, <clears throat> you know, go online and learn how to do some, some basic Brazilian jujitsu roles. If you want to, there's a million ways that you can distract yourself during this time that also, the, from an exercise point of view, helps your mental attitude, helps you to be more prepared to do the job when you get out there, which leads me to what Will said, which is he needs a shameless plug for Kelby One and Skip Cohen University. And he's wondering what other resources are out there, actually. Well, just how about just going to YouTube and type in the name of any photographer who you respect you will find a ton of material on YouTube. In fact, I think, I think all of us probably have something out there. But in addition to that, I mean, I went looking for some, some things that Tony Corbell had done. And there was a whole series he did for Pro Photo years ago of one light, two light, three light, and four light setups. Uh, Roberto Valenzuela has got a ton, out, a ton of stuff out there. He's uh, on Dixie the Dixon. Episode. He's so good. Yeah, there's just... Uh -huh. There's so much content on YouTube. And then obviously going into Kelby Media, there's stuff. Skip Cone yeah. University, there's stuff. Scott Bourne has got stuff. Don kamarechka has got stuff. Larry, I mean, all of us, Steve, Shamira, everybody has got content out there. Don't forget about YouTube because you can, you can essentially customize your search. Yeah, I did. And I did and, this ebook and this ebook is free and no strings attached. Not give me your email and I'll give you the ebook. Just nothing at all. I put it in my own Dropbox. And if you just go to that address, you can download and it's for photographers just getting into video. So it's absolutely free. No strings attached. Keep just that up there, there for a second. Cause I'm going to yep. put you full screen there. Okay. So this is where you can go to download the book, six profitable video recipes for photographers there's no sales pitches in it. It's free. You don't have to buy anything. You, it's just, you just get it for free. You don't even have to give me your email address. You're not Perfect. joining anything. It's free. 
I'll give you my email address, Larry. <laughs> yeah, and and I'll I'll I'm gonna second a couple of things, and that is this really is a good time to just do whatever kind of learning works for you. Everybody learns different. Some people need to read, some people need a visual, some people you know want to listen as they're you know driving, even though they're supposed to be in the house. Um, and there's a lot of resources for that. Kelby One is one of my favorite, not because Scott's on the show. It just actually is one of my favorite. The way the classes are broken down work really well. It's not like you're going to sit down and watch a five-hour class. They're broken into segments that you can start and stop when you need. There's a number of other resources out there. Creative Live is a great resource. Uh, Aaron Nace at Flurn is a great resource. And as Skip mentioned, you know, YouTube is, is a great resource. Just to add one super quick thing. Um, to Daniel's point, it is so important to keep a schedule. Don't sleep in every day. Get up at a set time. Make time for your business. Make time to learn, to expand your skill set. Make time to have a little exercise. Make time to call a loved one. Um, it is super important to stay disciplined right now. Yes. Hey, I want to piggyback on something, those of you that are in Q&A uh, now. Uh, Stephen wrote, Don, take some of your animal photos or family photos, use Photoshop to turn them into coloring pages and let the kids go to town. Now, I want everybody to think about your blog. Your website is about what you sell. Your blog is about what's in your heart. And something that I learned from Scott Bourne when I first started blogging is that the whole point of your blog is essentially to be helpful. So being able to create uh, content for your readership, and for most of you, your readership is probably uh, mom or dad, because at this point now, both parents are home with the kids. The kids are going crazy. You've got files and files and files of images. Turn some of those into coloring pages and fire them off to some of your clients. Uh, just to say, you know, something for, for these days to help pass the time for the kids and their family photos that they can color. And it's a great content piece to be able to share that on a blog post and encourage your readers to take advantage and remind them that you are a photographer and you're out here to help. And thank you. Who was it? Steven, did I lose it already? It's scrolled up. Uh, yeah. Thanks is... for that. Yeah. Thanks for that tip. Yeah. It's a good one. Uh, yeah, I want to jump on this one really quick because David is in the chat room and he said, Scott K, meaning Scott Kelby, how do we find the Friday webinar? And a couple people have chimed in just to let everybody know really quick. This webinar is the same address every day this week. Scott, are you doing a webinar Friday? We are. We're doing a webinar every Friday. Uh, it, it is um, kelby1live.com slash webcast. Easy. So okay. if you go there now, it's, 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 I think it's kind of a dead page, but 15 minutes before we start, uh, I believe it's at 11 a.m. I think on Friday at kelby1live.com slash webcast. Uh, and it's, um, and if you follow me on Twitter, uh, I'm at Scott Kelby or on Facebook, um, Skelby, S Kelby. Uh, I also post links to it and give you warnings the night before and the day of. And they're free and open to everybody. They're a lot of fun. We have people all over the world that join us, and uh, we take questions live as we're doing it and stuff. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun, and it's just, you know, when you're in the business of online training, you, you, it's, it's kind of an obvious thing for us to do. Uh, it's, it's what we do, so it was kind of great to be able to take this thing that's normally for our members and uh, make it available for everybody. We've got a ton of questions left. Skip, do you want to do like a speed round on the questions? Uh, what have we missed here? Uh, well, we've got a little advice from Italy, and that is avoid the news, uh, which is a running theme. Um, <clears throat> but then, uh, let's see here. Oh, well, Stephen asked uh, for a link to my posts or my episodes on copyright registration. And Stephen, the easiest thing is if you go to behindtheshot.tv and you search for copyright, I actually think you're going to get four uh, results. Three of them are copyright episodes. One of them is just an interview with Jack Resnicki, so the word copyright is in there. But you'll find the v v uh, episode number one copyright for photographers I did with Ed and Jack. 
Then after the 2018 changes in the registration system, I did a second episode with them. And then the third one is my actual walkthrough. And I mentioned a couple of plugins I use for Lightroom that make it a lot easier. LR Transporter, I'll just say it right now. Um, and so if you go just search for copyright, you'll find it. All right, a lot of stuff in here is just uh, great tips. Thank you, uh, Shamira. My wife makes my schedule. Uh, my my three year old daughter makes my schedule, so I hear that. Um, so every, every and a lot of thanks to Larry uh, for the book, and uh, we'll make sure that there is a link to that in the show notes for this episode because I think everybody should be able to uh, to get that, make use of that, uh, give it a read through in this time. And thank you so much for mentioning that to everybody. Hey, just a comment. Several people have commented about uh, music, and somebody had written on a Q&A here that they're also a musician. One thing I would absolutely recommend, uh, the music comes on in our house the minute the puppies are up, which is about 6.30, quarter, 7, and it plays all day long, and you never know what's going to play. One minute it's Enya, the next minute it's Tchaikovsky, and two minutes later it's an old Doors album. Put music on in your home. Music absolutely can tone it down, and I can find from my own experience, I can be thoroughly stressed and put on a favorite album. Um, I'm going back to one of Scott Kelby's Grit episodes where he was a little upset that Whitney Houston had been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> Whatever you listen to, be it Hard Rock or Whitney or Barry Manlow, <laughs> put it on. Put it on first thing in the day and just let it play all day long. It is soothing and it does help. Spotify has a great playlist. I think it's called Happy Music. And my that's the one my wife puts on every morning after the doggos are up. And and it's wonderful. I mean, it's it is just happy song after happy song. So it's uh and it does. Yeah. Uh, music is one of those things that impacts our life in so many ways. It it's it's a part of every movie. It's a part of, of our lives. It's the soundtrack of our lives. So hearing happy music makes you happy. Bless you. Bless you, Skip. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> stay away from Skip. It's Everybody good. move back. And yeah, can you, can, can you guys move my screen a little bit further uh, away from <laughs> I was Skip? just going to say, yeah, I'm right next to him. This Come is not on, good. Guys. <laughs> Don was telling me the story the other day about, Don, you were in the liquor store, and he felt a sneeze coming on, and he willed it away. It's like, oh, please. Oh, the fear just made it go away yeah. because if I, if everybody around me would look like I, uh, I, I was like, you know, wh why am I leaving the house if I have a sniffly nose? Well, it's allergies, yeah. people. It's allergies. <laughs> hey, this is yeah. peak of hay fever season and uh, and pollen season here in Florida. Hey, we're we're out of time. Uh, this video will be posted up on Skip Cone University on YouTube in just a little while. We'll have Scott's uh, Scott Bourne's. Uh, links from where we started today. Please pass word along to people that you think just need help or just want to hang out at lunchtime, be it an early lunch or late lunch, depending on where you're located. Tomorrow's guest is Jen Rosenbaum. Uh, that's, let's see, that's tomorrow. I forgot who's Thursday. Who's Thursday? Ann Geddes. Oh, yeah. Ann right? Geddes. How could you forget Ann Geddes? Ann Geddes. How could you forget Geddes. that one? And then Friday is Joe McNally. So we've got a great lineup with more input. And just remember, everybody, we all watch each other's backs together. And we're going to get through this.